She's now the second fastest ever. She is a determined Femke Bowl. She's already been running lights out this season. That is a time that only two women besides her have ever run. Femke Bowl is chasing down Jamaica. It's right on the line. She's done it. Femke Bowl is a middle distance sprinter and hurdler from the Netherlands whose rise to athletic mastery didn't exactly predict the level of success she possesses now. Bull was actually quite accident-prone during her adolescence, breaking her arm twice and was likely seeking preventive measures to avoid a third time. She states that a doctor of hers at the time suggested perhaps one of the most unconventional solutions you could propose to a kid who broke their arm twice, and that was the Japanese martial art, Judo. While she did practice the sport for a bit, and may even have competed in it at one point, Bull still had a craving for athletics that she would finally give into, and would eventually start competing for a youth athletics team in her home country, AV Triathlon. Contrary to what most people probably think, Bull's introduction into athletics appears to be within the cross-country realm. As early as 7 years old, you can find her competing for the Dutch Youth Club, running courses that were around 1000 meters or longer, and in some cases was placing quite well in them. She would continue to run at these events throughout her younger years, and we would start to see results on the track pop up once the 2010s rolled around. It's uncertain whether or not she was competing on the track before this, but funnily enough the first results of her that seem to exist are of her jumping into sand pits and throwing things like the javelin and discus instead in 2012. By 2013 though, this appeared to be Bull's first bout of promising sprinting talent. In February that year, she would make the finals in the Junior Indoor Championships, running 8.58, and also took part in some relay events that still stand as club records to this day. In 2014, she was still laser-focused on trying to come out of the blocks as quickly as possible, with high junior placements in the 100 and 200, and by 2015 was capable of running 8.06 in the 60, which was a massive improvement from last year. During the summer that same year, Bull had made the formal switch to the 400, a transition that would prove to be incredibly effective, winning the Dutch Under-18 Championships at age 15, securing a trip to Georgia for the European Youth Olympic Festival, but would end up getting knocked out early in the heats. While 2016 was another year centered around domestic events, she would quickly ascend to the senior level within her country. At the Dutch Outdoor Championships, she would not only make it past the heats, but managed to get to the finals with a top 3 finish in the semis. Unfortunately, she would just miss out on a medal spot, but would get her redemption at the Under-18 Championships, running under 55 seconds for the first time ever too. 2017, though, was the year where Bull would be taking flights to various countries in the hopes of pursuing international-level talent. These meets were still fairly low-key compared to something like the prestigious Diamond League series, but she was still putting up solid and consistent marks throughout the summer. With a ticket to the under-20 European Championships, it would take a personal best to even get out of the heats, and she would be knocked out of the semis with a respectable 54-second time. While Bull's indoor performances in 2018 had improved by a notable margin, this didn't quite translate to outdoor as much, with virtually the same quality of performances and a bit less international presence too. However, in 2019, a light bulb appeared to have flickered in someone within Bull's team, because for her outdoor season debut, she was set to compete in the 400, but this time, with hurdles in the way. The immediate results to say the least were pretty eye-opening. 58-12 was a great debut, but to run 55-94 two meets later was pretty insane for someone just getting started. For reference, here's the world athletic score for her 400 meter personal best, compared to her third ever 400 meter hurdle race. And if that's not enough, just take a look at her average 400 meter time from last year and compare it to what she's done in the hurdles just from three races alone. Taking her talents to Sweden at the under 20 European Championships, she would completely dominate the rest of the field, and was even selected to represent the Netherlands for the 2019 World Championships. This was completely untouched territory for the Dutch teenager, especially since she was in an era where the best 400 meter hurdlers to ever exist were present at these championships too. Bull would have to grit a PR to even make it out of the heats, and would be confidently knocked out of the semis 
likely due to fatigue from running a PR the day before. She would also run on the Dutch 4x4 squad, where they did make the finals, finishing in 7th place. Even though Bull unquestionably found her niche now in the Oval, the 2020 season was spoiled a bit with meets being temporarily shut down. When things were back on track though, she was back to competing as if nothing happened. Breaking the 54 second barrier for the first time ever, landing her a top 50 spot on the all-time list, and re-breaking what was now her national record that she had actually set just two weeks beforehand. Bull's summer would be capped off with four international meets, where she won every single one, ending her season completely undefeated in the hurdles. As strange as it sounds, the Olympics being postponed an entire year was actually a blessing in disguise for Femke Ball. Given she was still relatively new to the event all things considered, and how young she still was for a senior athlete, giving someone with this much potential another full year of training stimulus was bound to allow her to bridge the gap between her and the best in the world. Before this, however, a quick indoor tour would gear her up for the Olympic season, where she would not only annihilate the Open Four in every way possible, but even manage to take her first ever European title. Now, for outdoor, Bull's best head-to-head -head win at this point was over Ukraine's Anna Rizhaikova on a couple occasions in 2020. Pretty solid, right? However, the massive Diamond League tour Bull had planned this year would likely have her run into much more fierce competition. One of these women was Shamir Little, the 2015 World Champs silver medalist. Bull won every single Diamond League event she entered, with three back-to-back -back PBs and three separate wins over Little. Despite Femke Bull's breakneck improvement arc, the American gatekeepers of the event at this time, Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni and Dalila Mohammed, were still somehow staying way ahead of the curve, with times that continued to push the boundaries of the event to new levels. As for the Olympics, Bull was a drastically different runner than 2019, so realistically making it to the finals would be relatively easy on paper. Once she did make it to the finals though, Dutch athletics fans suddenly realized that Bull not only had a legitimate shot and not just obtaining an Olympic medal, but as the race went on, they realized that she put herself in contention to become the best 400 meter hurdlist in the world. At the same time, Muhammad first over that hurdle, so she has the lead. McLaughlin and over the seventh, if they come off the turn in eight, to the line, and Sydney McLaughlin, a world record again. The company she kept in there, and if you're going to have your winning streak end, you're going to go, well, at least it took 51 58 and 51 46 to beat me. Despite running a monstrous personal best and running the third fastest time in the history of the event, Muhammad and McLaughlin Lavroni were somehow one step ahead still, also running the next two fastest times the event had ever seen, cementing this as the greatest 400 meter hurdle final in women's history by a landslide. The golden era of the women's 400 meter hurdles had officially begun on that day, and Bull was officially a part of it now too. The difficult part now though was, as obscenely talented and resilient Bull clearly was, she was technically at the bottom of this short but incredibly sturdy totem pole. In order to win a world title, she would have to beat not just the number two all-time runner in the event, but the number one runner too, the latter which was the same age as her, and was somehow continually improving as well. You might be wondering if McLaughlin Lavroni and Bull would meet each other this year before the world championships. Well, to put it short, no. As a matter of fact, they have never faced off against each other outside of championship races, despite Bull attending a slew of European events. As in 2021, McLaughlin Lavroni only raced in one single final outside of the trials and the Olympics, and for the 2022 lead-up, she'd more or less do the exact same thing. Nevertheless, Bull made her presence known in Europe, as she replicated her incredible consistency yet again with four Diamond League wins in a row, and sneaking in a low 52 as a final tune-up before the championships. McLaughlin Lavroni logged two separate mid-51 times, so she was still in prime form. 
and while Muhammad couldn't attend the trials due to injury, she is still coming back as the reigning world champion and is granted a bye to the games as a result. The rematch was set in stone, and it was time to see if the placements would change or if Bull could put herself at the very top on her second time around. ...has done to the backstretch should be illegal. She is all by herself and less than 200 meters to go now, Lee. Sydney McLaughlin has left them behind. Femke Bull comes on the inside of Dalila Muhammad now. Please, there is no stopping her. 50.6, it's a world record. Sydney McLaughlin has just smashed her own record. 51 low, 50.9, 50.6. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you're a high school runner yeah. and maybe your personal best. Femke Bull was able to put up a phenomenal mark to upgrade her bronze in the Olympics to a silver at the World Championships, but McLaughlin Lavroni was still able to put a few extra strides in front of Bull and would send the world record further into the stratosphere. Bull, of course, had made up so much ground in the last couple of years, but frankly, there was still more work to be done. Could this perpetual game of catch-up pay dividends down the line with her voluminous racing style, or would she need to switch things up a bit? With the 2023 World Championships set to happen an entire month later than the last two major competitions have been held, this gave Femkable an extra month of base building, which for someone who races as often as her, might actually work out in her favor here. She opened up her indoor season in America at the New Bounds Indoor Grand Prix, where she'd take a stab at the niche, but respectably hard 500 meter world record, or <coughs> world best, set well over a decade ago. This was executed handily, securing her first ever senior world best. While Bull's recent accomplishments had certainly put her on the map by this point, she would out of nowhere rewrite the history books for the first time ever at a conventional discipline at the Dutch Indoor Championships. Femkable had taken down the oldest world record in the history of the sport. Czechoslovakia's Jan Merokratochvijova had set the indoor 400 record over 40 years ago, and now it had dissipated in 49.26 seconds. This was the strongest bull had looked in the early season by a notable stretch, which had many excited given she was likely going to replicate her infectious and consistent racing presence at the Diamond League series. What about McLaughlin Lavroni though? Right, so McLaughlin Lavroni actually did do a Diamond League race for her outdoor season debut, but she decided to pivot to the Open Four with the possibility of doing that for the World Championships. However, did this mean Bull could just settle down a bit and not have to worry about her potentially being at the World Championships? Actually, it's quite the opposite. Let me just show you what she exactly did with this knowledge in mind. Gets the world record and Femka Bowl, what happened?
and everyone is stepping on the track, delivering performance after performance that just feel unforgettable. Like we're never- I think they're falling just far out enough of reach where it may not matter what Femke Bowl does, but we'll see, remember. But what would Femke Bowl do in this final 120 meters? Here Nothing. we go. It's four by four. Femke Bowl is chasing down Jamaica. It's right on the line. She's done it. Femke Bowl in the Netherlands. I knew it. You have someone who had disappointment like Sam Cabal had. A number two all-time mark, two separate world titles, and three separate sub-52 times, Fem Cabal was nearly, by all accounts, on top of the world now. Of course, it would have been fantastic to see the rematch everyone had been hoping for, but the nine separate finals Bull was able to execute beautifully, combined with her emphatic leg on the 4x400 relay, was 10 times more than enough to make up for it. Since 2024 was approaching, this meant that an Olympic year had officially completed, and Paris would be the next location the Dutch woman would return for a second shot at such a distinguished title. However, she wasn't just going to let the indoor season slide despite it being an Olympic year. As usual, Bull's times would improve on all fronts yet again from a meet-to-meet -meet standpoint, even to the point where at the Dutch Indoor Championships, she broke her own world record yet again, running 49.24. At the World Indoor ones, though, a title alone would have sufficed given you have the heats and then a semis before the final, but Bull had managed to break her own world record, running a time of 49.17. As we see now confirmed, 49-17 world indoor champion and world record holder. Checks her After helping her team win the 4x4 for a double indoor world title, this is currently the page we're at in Femme Cabal's book. From a young and curious accident-prone girl trying to establish an identity in the raw speed department in track, only to exploit a massive hidden talent in the longer sprints, then to find out some hurdles make her even better, is a career trajectory that has continued to go and go, to the point where she has still not stopped improving yet and has heavily refined her flat speed on the track to the point where she's setting world records now. Cindy McLaughlin Lavroni's record in the 400 meter hurdles is arguably the greatest women's world record of the modern era. But if Bull continues the trajectory of breaking into new, massive personal boundaries, in some cases, new international boundaries, we may see her break into an echelon no woman in general has ever gone before. The Americans will wait patiently, as while McLaughlin Lavroni hasn't raced in quite some time, she has shown time and time again that when she does return, she is always a force to be reckoned with. The run back from 2022 will certainly be an intriguing one, with Bull becoming an entirely different athlete at this point, and whether or not we'll see them race before the Olympics, or heck, even during the Olympics, is a question we will find out soon. Until then though, this has been the rise of Femme Kabul, and thanks for watching. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you want to support the channel for more content like this, come on over and become a patron. Drop a sub, and check out my other links below. I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next, and take care.